as you get down the line, like, you'll find it, whether you like elk or like mule deer. But if you just like to hunt and go out, like, I think especially for a beginner, like, just go on as many as you can. Some people don't like bow hunt. Some, some people like crossbows better than the compounds. Cool. Find what drives you, that way you're not burnt out and bored. People now, they'll be like, we're doing a big elk hunt, like what do I need? They will buy a full $1,200 setup and then they'll sell it for 800 bucks on Rockside. By day four, I wanted to amputate both feet, throw them in the river, and just lay down and just curl up in a ball. Instead of focusing so much on the gear for the first couple years, focus on getting yourself out there. Because then I think you're not going to spend money on gear that you don't need. You're going to kind of have a better idea of what you, what you want. You can generally tell during the communication and the conversations, is this guy full of crap? Or is this guy like, is he telling me what I want to hear? Is he telling me what I need to hear? Hey everyone, this is Jordan Budden. You're listening to Living Country in the City. Y'all ready for your dose of flyover state spirit? Straight from the concrete jungle? Well, put down your latte and pull on your boots. It's time for Living Country in the City. Hey, y'all. Welcome to episode 111 of Living Country in the City. Before we get started, I want to say a huge thank you to Sawyer Products for their continual support of the podcast. Y'all, as most of you know, I was just recently on an 8,000-mile cross-country road trip. And y'all, I went through the south in the summer. I went through just some really gnarly spots with bugs. And there's one thing that never ceases to amaze me, and that is how effective the Sawyer Products insect repellents are. They're permethrin and they're picardin. It is great for mosquitoes. It protects against ticks, both of which are just absolutely heinous this summer, as you guys know. So what I want you all to do, head on over to Sawyer.com. Check out all the amazing products that Sawyer puts out that will help keep you and your family safe from ticks, mosquitoes, and all sorts of creepy crawlies this summer. Also, if y'all are looking to upgrade your web presence, maybe start a hunting brand, a podcast, or just create a website in general, what I want y'all to do is head on over to livingcountryinthecity.com, look for the website design tab, click on that, and on that page you can find a selection of website design and development work that I've done. Additionally, there is a quote request form on that page. Y'all, I guarantee you will walk away happy with the website I build for you, so make sure y'all check that out. All right, y'all, getting on to today's episode. We are back at Hunt Expo, and I got a chance to sit down with Jordan Budd and Jordan Adams, and we had really an awesome time talking about gear and advice for new hunters and just hunting in general. So, y'all, I hope you enjoy episode 111 with Jordan Budd and Jordan Adams. All right. Well, here we are at the Western Hunt Expo still. Y'all are probably sick of hearing from me uh, with all the background noise at this point. But here we are, sitting uh, back behind the Kafaru and Alpha Bow Hunting booth out here in the, in the corner. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I have Jordan and Jordan, no relation. Um, yeah, no relation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I am here with Jordan Bud and Jordan Adams. Um, I figured, why only have one Jordan when you can have two? Exactly. Twice the fun. <laughs> we come as a package deal. Yeah, we're Jordan squared, so it works. <laughs> but yeah, um, I would like to start out with just a little bit uh, about yourselves. How did you guys get started in hunting? What, uh, what really got you into the outdoors? Yeah, I would say, uh, for me anyway, it's just super young age. Um, I grew up around it. My dad got me into it. Um, we had we live on a ranch in northwest Nebraska where I was born and raised and where we live now. So um, we had antelope, mule deer, whitetail, everything out the back door so I could just go and kind of took it upon myself, I guess. It's just kind of how I was wired. Um, Dad took me as much as he could, but a lot of it was just me. I would just roll, you know, just go, just go because I could do it and uh, I didn't want to wait for anybody. So just there you go. And now... Now you are in the thick of it. <laughs> no, no, I'm in the thick of it. Yeah, it's, it's been a heck of a ride. It's pretty fun. Awesome. So what got you into the outdoors? Uh, my dad, at the age of eight, watching hunting shows, going out there. He hunted since he was 16 and just go out, shoot some guns, and now I'm here. <laughs> Between whitetail, whitetail was the main dig, turkeys, and then, of course, you got the off-season, small critters, like squirrels, rabbits, yeah. whatever, yeah. and then fishing, trapping. 
Well, that's the one thing I've started learning to do more is my first year I made the mistake of like, okay, I wanted to go hunt, hunt elk. Mm -hmm. And so I dedicated my whole, from January when I, I figured out that I was going to do this to September, that was all I was focused on was training for this elk hunt, training for this elk hunt. There were probably 20 or 30 different hunts I could have gone on, whether they were just going out predator hunting or yeah. chasing pigs or deer in California. We start so stinking. We start in like July mm -hmm. uh, for uh, blacktail. So many hunts I could have gone on and so many opportunities uh, that, that could have prepared me better for being, being, in the, being in the outdoors. I think it's nothing, nothing is a substitute for that experience. And, mm -hmm. you know, even if you're out just yeah. shooting squirrels or coyotes or whatever, no, I, there's something you can pick from I, that. I totally agree. I think especially just getting started, like as many, <clears throat> as many hunts as you can go on, as many animals as you can go on, like get all that knowledge together and then... As you get down the line, like, you'll find it, whether you like elk or, like, mule deer better. And, like, Robbie Denning says it the best when he's, like, if you want to be a mule deer hunter and you want to consistently shoot big mule deer, that's what you're going to have to focus on. But if you just like to hunt and go out, and like, I think especially for a beginner, like, just go on as many as you can. Like, people coming from back east or, like, on the west coast and trying to come do mountain hunts and stuff like that, you just got to go and you got to do it. Because otherwise, you're just never, you're never going to know. Well, when you're coming from a spot of, I mean, about as raw of a beginner as you can be, mm -hmm. like I was, there's so many different um, aspects you have to learn. And when you're going out with a bow by yourself on a DIY mm -hmm. elk hunt, you're literally like having to try and apply all of these, all of these principles all at once. You know, you think you got them all, but you've never practiced them before. Yeah. Whereas, you know, like maybe you do go on a predator hunt or uh hunting hogs or you know uh, something else yeah okay you may not be getting that full experience mm -hmm. but you're able to learn certain aspects and you know okay so yeah you learn this part about stocking up on an animal and or playing the wind like hogs playing the wind yeah you learn so much about playing the wind hunting hogs you get a lot of yeah. experience and exposure lots of encounters um and so i think it's super important that take the opportunities as they arise if you want to do something, go for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Focus on that and go for it. Mm -hmm. But don't let it blind you to ways that you can better prepare. Exactly. Yep. Um, so what would you say, like, in your time hunting, mm -hmm. what would you say are some maybe important things for someone coming into it uh, to start considering? Some of the, I mean, obviously, yeah, you want to go out and you want to shoot your bow, mm -hmm. uh, that basic stuff. But as, as someone's getting into hunting, what would you say are some of the really important uh, aspects to start examining, start working on, start considering? Mm -hmm. um, if, if it's kind of like in a Western type, I would say like logistics. Think through your logistics as far as like what – you know where you're going to get your water um planning like how i yeah i don't know i think things like that dialing down your gear list a little bit better um oh man other things there's just so much there's so much to it um but i think like you were saying like whether you go on a predator hunt or whatever like that's gonna let you you're gonna learn to play the wind and obey the wind always and it's gonna make it to where you don't have to think about it so much you're just going to do it. You're going to be like, all right, the wind's here. This is the way I'm going to go. Like a lot of that stuff comes after you've done it for so long, it comes kind of second nature and you don't even really think about it. You just do it. And that's, I, yeah, I mean, that's one of the big things, I guess. It's uh, tough to nail down because there's so many, like there's so much to it. Gotcha. What do you think, Jordan? I would say probably just find what drives you. Because, I mean, especially now with the Instagram, social media stuff, you see somebody who goes out there and does all this stuff and you think, why am I not doing that? And maybe yeah. you're not quite as interested or not quite as involved. Pe peer pressure. They're pressuring you that you need to do this. You got to get this stuff. You find what drives you. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's into fishing. Not everybody's into turkey hunting. No, some people don't like bow hunting. Some, some people like crossbows better than mm -hmm. compounds. Cool. Find what drives you. That way you're not burnt out and bored fuel the passion i guess don't hunt somebody else's hunt exactly find find Man. your hunt yeah that's that's yep. the best way to put it yeah i mean it's 
uh, don't get me wrong, like there's a lot of inspiration out there. Absolutely. And yeah. you know, Instagram's awesome. Uh, YouTube is awesome. It can be a huge detriment though too if you you need to look at that and realize it's inspiration. Mm -hmm. It's something that may give you an idea, mm -hmm. yeah. but you still have to use a bit of discernment and your own develop your own Man. opinions. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people that I just live vicariously for, like through because there's some some stuff I just I, I can't do. I know my limits and I can't do it. That's cool. I'm gonna stick to what I know and what I love. If you're gonna do an elk hunt, like don't I just did like that late season archery elk hunt. Like, don't look at my video and be like, that's what I want to go do for my first hunt. Don't do it because you will not like it. And you will probably not be successful. Just, say, I mean, it's just kind of the, it, the it's, truth it's of it. That, honest. That's a super tough hunt. And just, just don't do it. Do something else. Yeah. And it's, you know, like I said, like, if you want to do an elk hunt, there's ways to do elk hunts that are possibly a little bit higher success or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe go on an elk hunt with someone else and help them yeah. pack out. And, you know, I've talked about this countless times mm -hmm. on the podcast, and it's something I wish I had done, was volunteer to go with someone else. You know, okay, yeah, maybe you'll draw a tag. Maybe you have drawn a tag or it's later in the year or an over-the-counter tag later, but go with someone else and learn if that's something you actually want to do before yeah. you invest six, eight hundred thousand some dollars in just tags. Oh, for sure. I mean, let alone like, gear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we were just talking about like Aaron and Frank earlier. Like here's a good example of those guys. And like what you said about don't live somebody else's hunt. There's people who they listen to their podcast all the time and they're like, OK, Aaron and Frank say they're going to go six miles in. They're going to go like so people will pick a spot like that. They'll get halfway back there and realize they're out of their league or they'll get there and be like this sucks and then they're not you know they're so burnt out they don't want to do anything else i mean not only is that maybe not the way you want to hunt like that's you just burnt you know two days if you're going to go back out and try to figure it out again you just burnt two days you probably don't have another backup plan for a place that's closer mm -hmm. and then you just i mean and then to add on top of that i mean you just spent you know thousand bucks in gas getting out there um how many ever dollars in gear you have three days left to hunt to try to figure it all out and then you just that's yeah. a lot try to do something like do some more introductory and whatever that may be do do a truck hunt do yeah. you know do like a base camp and then backpack there or do you know be like i'm gonna get a mile off the road like if you think you're gonna backpack in five miles and pack an elk out i mean that's like that's next that's next level that sucks especially if you're mm -hmm. by yourself and so it just just because aaron and frank are doing it and going i mean they've got don't think that that's what you have to do yeah. to like complete it because it's not mm -hmm. uh, jordan right. made a good point like stick to your wheelhouse just, just stick stay to yourself lane, stay yeah. true yeah and i mean i like i fell into that trap is i yeah. i was like this i mean and it's still what I want to do. Like, yeah. I mean, oh, even I after that hellish ordeal, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's still all I want to do. But I'm learning now and I'm, I'm building up to that. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to try every year. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to try because, you know, you learn a lot. But I, I'm also going in with more realistic expectations of what it's going to be and an understanding of how hellish it's going to be. But, like, you know, it's funny. And you talk about, like, you know, everyone talks about, okay, yeah, well, you do have to hike in six miles. And that's where you find it. Mike. like, well... Okay, when Aaron and Frank are, like, hiking mm -hmm. in six miles, that's because they know there's Something deer there. back there. They know there's elk back there, and, or, and they're either after a specific one, mm -hmm. or they know there's a herd there that's going to have something good in there. Yeah. They're not, like, committing to that area just based on a mm -hmm. map or, right. you know, some data. There's research. and there's homework Yeah, there's that. a little more scouting and homework involved in that. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if you're just going into an area, yeah, Maybe uh, set up base camp by your car and go hike out from there. Mm -hmm. um, don't commit fully to an area. Like, if you go into a spot and you hear just a war zone of elk bugling down there, then, yeah, maybe you do want to hike that extra mm -hmm. three miles in and set up a, a little spike camp down there and, yeah. and start going from there. But every situation is going to be different. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to discourage people from trying new no. stuff because that's yeah. the, the last thing. But go in with realistic expectations and – and work yourself up to things, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish I had done a lot more hunting mm -hmm. before I'd gone out because I would have, if nothing else, I would just would have learned that lesson. Like, 
you don't need to commit to an area yeah. unless you know like, you know there's animals in yeah, there. Yeah, we had a we had a message. She might know who she is after this, but whatever. Um, we had a girl message us that said, "Hey, you know what would you recommend for a pack? I'm going on a 14-day elk hunt with my husband. This is my first one, and I'm like, you're going to die. No, just kidding. Oh my gosh. But that's you're what I thought. I mean, you th you think the same thing, and it's the meant. I mean. I have a hard time, and don't think like people on Instagram that are shooting this stuff, it's not a struggle for them. Like we just walk out and freaking shoot something because it's not how it works. Like after, you know, I left Wyoming and went home for a few days because I like mentally, I was just like not in it anymore. So don't like block out a big thing and be like, oh, I'm going to do this for 16 days. I'm going to go here and go here. Like have a little bit of realistic, like plan be like okay i I want a day here you know after four days i'm gonna have one day where i'm gonna stay in town do laundry chill out yep. and go in with a fresh mind because if you don't especially i think if you're starting out with it and it's like a western hunt you're not gonna make it 16 days man i mean it's just i can't make it 16 days you know oh yeah I've jordan doing it took a while. me to the mountains my first time in july we went for four days by day four, I wanted to amputate both feet, <laughs> throw them in the river, and just lay down and just curl up in a ball. And, and it, and we weren't even hunting. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah. But that's just something for people to think about because they always think, oh, it's, it's, it's almost like what well, I can't remember who says it, but like you always have a plan until somebody punches you in the face. Exactly. Oh yeah, it's yeah. Just Everyone like has that. a plan until they're hit or something like that. Until they're punched in the f yeah, yeah, something like that. It's it's true. And it's it like will hit you. It's all fun and like planning and you know it's, it's exciting. everything until you get to the trailhead and there's 77 people there yep. and you can't park your truck there for more than two days or something like that, which happened to me. Happened. So <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> no, it's it's funny, man. I, I I did it again this year too. Is you know I went with a buddy and we went seven miles deep. He had pack llamas and I mean I, we set up a nice camp with those mm -hmm. pack llamas. Thank God. But it was you know we got in there and. He's like, I, there, this bull was a war zone last year. There has to be elk down there. And we didn't, we didn't hear or see anything coming in. I mean, it was, Colorado was really weird this year anyway. It was, yeah. Um, with how dry it was and then how cold it was. Like, it, the elk were acting weird. The deer were acting weird. And yeah. then you weren't really sure where you should be hunting them. I'm like, okay, well, it's dry, so I think I'd want to hunt them on water. But it's also half of the water's frozen over, so I'm not really sure what to do at this yeah. point. Um but so we were kind of running around up there, and it was, I mean, you know, for my 300 feet above sea level, but starting at 10, or I think we parked at 9,000 feet. Yeah. Pretty much started hiking around, like our camp was at like 10,000, mm -hmm. and we were looking down on goats at some point. We, we were hiking up to, we got up to 14,000 on one, one of the days, oh, yeah. and we're like, oh, okay, let's glass down to this area, see if we want to like move down to this other basin. We looked down, and I'm like, are those goats? Are those goats b below us? Mm -hmm. I'm like, what am I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was a crazy thing. It's funny. Uh, it r you reminded me of something, you know, when you talked about someone that had reached out about a pack. Uh, when I was planning for my first elk hunt, yeah. you know, I went on a rock slide. And I, you know, bought, I've bought so much gear off of those <laughs> rock slide forums. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, my gosh. 90% of my gear is used by off a rock slide, yeah. probably. Um but I went on the rock slide forums, and, you know, I kind of sent out my, my first attempt at a gear list, like from whatever it is, you know, listening to Grady Podcasts mm -hmm. or Randy Newberg or, uh, you know, there was no Kafaro cast at the time, but, like, just seeing gear lists and figuring stuff out and, like, mm -hmm. what I had and what I could afford. And so I sent out my gear list, and people just ripped me apart. Like, not even in a nice – not even, like, in a constructive way. Yeah. I'm, like – I was sitting there, and I'm, like – it's a good thing I got some thick skin because, like, this would have intimidated me otherwise. And I remember you actually reached out, and I didn't connect it. Yeah. Because, um, you know, they, I mean, whatever, months later, I was I'd following you on mm -hmm. Instagram or whatever, and I never connected the That's name. That's crazy. Uh, until, I think maybe it was last year, you may have been wearing, like, some rock slide gear or mm -hmm. something. That I'm like, Jordan, bud, no way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, I, you, you, you reached out, and I really appreciated that. Yeah. Um, cause I was able to just like ask, I was like, okay, like everyone's talking crap on me because I'm using this piece I, of gear. I, I remember that. I think it was yeah. a, I think it was a, a life straw or something like I was planning on yeah. packing a life straw and I just didn't understand 
what the issue was. Mm -hmm. And you, you walked me through it and some of the reasons. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. If one of these a-holes had said that, <laughs> I know. rather and than, what usually, kind of idiot uses a life straw? Right. Mm -hmm. We're usually pretty good about, if somebody's going to talk like that on Rockside, like we want it to be a place where beginners yeah. can come and ask questions. If they're going to talk like that, like we'll just, I don't want to say we'll okay. boot them, but th we're not afraid. To, we don't care about banning people. Constructive and criticism. And I was going to say, everyone wasn't like that. Yeah. It, I mean, no, it was, no. there was like, I think this group of like three people and it kind of got on its own little sub thread mm -hmm. of, uh, of responses back and forth to that. And I was like, I, I think what it was is like, you know, they, there's a couple people said it and I respond. I'm like, oh, okay, well, you know, I thought I, this is why I packed that, you know, this is what I was thinking I would do. And it, what their response wasn't like, Oh no! This isn't why that won't. This is why that is probably not the best idea. Like yours was. Mm -hmm. It was. Well, if you want to be stupid and get dehydrated and <laughs> not and die out in the backcountry, then go ahead and do that. Yeah. I'm like, what the? What I is know. wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. We're trying. Yeah, we're trying to weed uh, those guys out. Make it a more constructive criticism. Or I mean, uh, you can only do so place, much in a community forum. No, for like, sure. Yeah. It's for like sure. people are going to talk, but I I I preach the glories of those. Uh, the classifieds to everyone. I'm oh like, man. I'm like, here's the deal. You will get four times the gear for half the price. Yep. Um, and like half of these guys are selling like this Timberline pack. I, they, I bought a Kafaru Timberline mm -hmm. one, the big one that I probably should not have bought yeah. because, <laughs> oh, I packed it full. <laughs> I was like, I got all this room. I Probably can put stuff in here. Yeah. Um, I think it was the Timberline one. Timberline one, I think is yeah. the big they one. They have the internal frame? Uh, no. Or external. Yep, no, so it's it like the DT1. Duplex Timberline 1. I think so. That I sounds think. That sounds right. I think so. Um, and I, so I ended up buying like three packs because <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't decide yeah. what I wanted. And so and I works. kept telling myself I was going to sell the other two, and they're still sitting in my closet. Mm -hmm. uh, but So I buy three packs. I ended up buying an Exo pack on a Kufaru bikini frame. Mm -hmm. I bought, uh, and I bought then two Kufaru bags, uh, yeah. just trying the different sizes and stuff. And I... Uh, and so I just, I tell people like, you can get almost brand new stuff. This Timberline bag I bought was, I think the dude wore it once. He didn't even hunt in it. And he ended up like, he ended up having to go out of, out of the country, uh, he yeah. was in the military and he's like, I'm not going to be using this anytime soon. Like I kind of need the money right now yeah. and brand new Timberline so pack. And I mean like, yeah, I mean, it happens every year. Like people now they'll be like. You know, we're doing a big, we're doing a big elk hunt. Like, what do I need? They will buy a full twelve hundred dollar setup because we told them to, and then they'll sell it for eight hundred bucks on Rockside, and in the description will say used on a five day hunt, no meat packed. That's it. Jeez. So I'm probably gonna it's, use it's these packs until I literally wear through them, or I or oh I die first. Oh man. Oh like, yeah. I. Yeah, I can't switch. It's crazy. I am. <laughs> mm. I like my gear, and I've spent a lot of money on gear. But that I buy gear that I know I'm going to grind mm -hmm. into the earth. Like, I mean, you look at these crispies I'm wearing right now. Oh, I know. I was going to ask you about those. They're in a little rough shape, actually. <laughs> um, I posted a picture of them before, but they, uh, they're, uh, these are cleaned. I scrub mm -hmm. scrubbed these things, and there's a little bit of blood in them. Uh, it's from my deer and my javelina. I'm pretty proud of those it. Those are the Laponias, right? Yeah. yeah. Crispy Laponia. They are the most comfortable boot in the world. Yeah. Not a ton of support, but they're, it's like hunting in a sneaker. That's cool. And, uh, but, yeah, suffice to say, they don't do well with large amounts of blood while mm -hmm. you're not paying attention and, mm -hmm. and carrying something out on your back. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dude, it happens. That's what, that's what our gear should all look like, really. You know? I've you got a, it right. I've got an Alaska Guide Creations. Uh, I was just talking with the guys over there, yeah. too. And uh, I was having some issues with my, my harness, and it's solely because, I guess, Vortex Binos and the Alaska Guide Creations Harness, that's like the one combo that acts really weird and makes uh, squeaky noises. Oh, really? Um, so that he had some suggestions mm -hmm. for me to help with it. Uh, but I was talking to him, and I'm like, and he's like, you know, and if it doesn't work out, we'll, you know, if, if, if it's mm -hmm. still making these noises, we'll, we'll you know, make it right, and we'll uh, give you right. a new pack. And I'm like, I don't, know if, I don't know if I can get a new pack. Like, I've been through a lot with this one. It's Dude. got blood on it. Like... <laughs> My you blood, too. Sentimental get, value. You get that sentimental value like I do, that attachment. I just sold – I started shooting Obsession 
bows and like I hadn't used my Hoyt in a couple of years and I was looking at it and like I've shot a couple of my two biggest deer with it and I'm just like it's like but a, I kind of need the money friend. yeah I kind of need the money I'm like man I hate to let you go but yeah so yeah. so since we're kind of on the topic yeah. I get I get asked a lot because I've been through the ringer on my first hunt and so people in my same situation ask me they're like what do I I'm, I'm going on my first western hunt. I listen to your podcast and I want to go on a western hunt yeah. like uh, I'm going with this group of buddies that have hunted before. Uh, and it, my first response is, well, ask them what they're <laughs> bringing in and yeah. what you need. But then I'm like, you know, here's, here's what I took. Mm-hmm. But say somebody came to you and was like, okay, what's, what's like the essential gear that I need to, that I need to invest in? Yeah. Uh, you know, we all know you buy, there's certain things you invest the money in. Yeah. Everything else you buy what you can mm-hmm. afford and you upgrade it over time. But uh, what, what are maybe a few things that, that you guys think are – core investments like you want to you want to spend your money on this and then figure everything else after that um i think boots is number one Mm -hmm. i mean everybody says that but they say it because it's true yeah boots are definitely number one like they're on your feet all the time no matter what and if you get back there and like i've done this before i got three miles back i was just like a backpack fishing trip three miles back in a pair of boots that weren't really broken I got really bad blisters. The three miles out freaking sucked. Like, it was the worst. And you don't want to do that. Yeah. And, yeah. And then with your boots, uh, certainly break them in. Wear them Mm -hmm. as much as you can before. Um, So that's one thing. Uh, Backpacks, people will say backpacks are the next. Um, I would say, like, backpacks are super important, especially if you're going to haul a lot of of weight. Yeah. know why that is and why that is is because you need a pack that's going to have the correct load lifter height for you it's going to fit your body the best um because if you don't like your traps are going to be smoked and like you're you're going to be smoked especially if you're going to pack out it's not going to be very much fun but um i wouldn't like you know the kafarus that we run i mean that, that stuff is tried and true it is a little expensive for you know a beginner and Rock Slide classifies as the perfect place to find that and everything else. I would say buy the boots new um, mm-hmm. for sure. But Yeah, I'm not sure I'd else. trust the uh, <laughs> – unless I knew the person. Yeah. Like It was like they tried them on, maybe a hike yeah. 10 miles in them, and mm-hmm. that was about it. That just feels weird to me. Yeah. Like That's like trying on someone else's underwear Under- almost. Right. Like. Yeah. 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 yeah, but backpacks is important too. And then, again, it's like hit on a lot, but it is important, especially for Western hunting, is like optics. Try to get the best you can afford. I mean, if you're sitting behind those things for, you know, eight, mm-hmm. seven, eight hours a day, it's... Well, we're not something I learned and, and I've kind of experienced is with optics, especially, yeah. buy for... You know, there's no magic optic that's going to work in every situation. If you're going to be in, say, somewhere in Idaho where there's not a lot of glassing opportunities and it's just, like, choked timber mm-hmm. and you're probably not seeing... You're not like sitting up on a on a glassing point. Yeah. You're not breaking apart this timber. Um, you probably don't need 15s, and you're probably nope. not going to want to carry those right. in. Yeah. However, you're packing in to, you know, look for coos deer in Arizona. You're probably going to have to have those 15s, and yeah. you're going to have to either your spotter. yeah deal with the extra weight or, you know, find a glassing point that you can get a a bike or a ranger or something to. Mm-hmm. Um, that was that was the one thing I kind of learned with the optics, where, you know, my tens are probably not the best glassing opportunities for Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, and that's really where if you're going to be doing a lot of glassing, a lot of high alpine stuff, yeah. But if you're going to like even North Idaho or yeah, like just like we were talking about, know where you're going, obviously yeah. for this stuff. But uh, and know how you're hunting. If you're, yeah. you know, I mean, obviously, you know, you're new at this. You may not. You may not quite understand mm-hmm. the, the correlation between that as much, but that's when you, yeah, that's when you do reach out to people. And I think people are a lot more likely to respond if you're like, hey, I'm going on an elk trip to Idaho. I'm kind of in this uh, very heavy timber mm-hmm. area. What, uh, what optics would be good for this area? Yeah. Versus just like, hey, what binoculars should I use? Mm-hmm. Like, Yeah, it's that's so such a, big. Like, use it. That's a loaded question. Yeah. Because you, you get asked that. Like, how many times have you been asked that? And you're like, this is going to be a long conversation. Yeah. This is going to be a lot of back and forth. Where, you know, and I mean, I am I always try and respond as much as I can. But it's tough sometimes. You get it busy is. and, you know, we're out hunting too. And so th- the more information you can provide to someone when you're asking a question, mm-hmm. if they can just respond with an answer, 
without having to be like ask for clarification and all yeah. this stuff and like and and know what your budget is too like yeah there's man, a big, that's a big one if you're ready to spend 3500 bucks then you know what Swaros are really nice oh man mm -hmm. yeah they are i looked through a pair for the first time mm -hmm. uh, last january or last august and mm -hmm. everything just looks muddy and mm -hmm. sad oh, compared yeah. mm -hmm. but <laughs> it's it's tough to beat and like the optics thing like we were talking about with her like she's from missouri Whitetail hunted, never really had to use glass. Mm -mm. She has a pair of cheaper 10 power binoculars. Oh, they're eights. Eights, yeah. yeah. Yep. Gets out to my house and like starts looking at everything. And now she's looking at a pair of SIG 12s. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Right, right, But it just, yep. I feel like what happens with optics a lot is like, you you don't want you won't want to spend the money. Like I have a good analogy. I I bought a pair of uh, Swaro 10 by 42 EL ranges. Freaking ridiculous expensive. Couple mortgage payments basically on the dang things. Eesh. But I got I caught so much hell from that from a couple of guys because I bought that. I wasn't ever going to use them, all this stuff. We went on an antelope with, hunt with one of them. I couldn't get them out of his hands. Yeah. Well, a, a couple of months later, he says, hey, I think I'm going to get a pair of range finding binoculars. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, man, I know. But he says, I want to get a pair of Bushnells. And I'm just like, I mean, they're not they're not going to be the same, man. I'm just telling you they're not going to be the same. And what I feel like happens is people, they want it, but they don't want to sp spend the money on it. And then they spend the money on a pair of, you know, lower grade ones, end up selling those and buying the, mm -hmm. instead of just going right to what they want, it's they, they kind of go through a, you know. Yeah. It's almost like they have trouble prioritizing and what they want and what they need. Or do you need this to see that ear flicker underneath a cedar tree, or do you just want to hope to find one laying under that cedar tree at some point in time yeah. within the five days you're there? Well, it's tough. Uh, yeah, just I feel like they spend more money in the long run trying to get up to that than if they you just You definitely bought, do. You know, mm -hmm. so. And, like, I mean, and that's even if, if you even sell, sell those. Half of the time, they just end up in your closet, sitting in a box, yeah. getting all dusty, because yep. you use your buddies mm -hmm. and you realize, like, crap, these things are are so not mm -hmm. what I need for here. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, it's one thing. You know, it's one thing. You don't you don't need. Uh, you know, if you're just bringing some some binos, like I know, I was just talking with the guy about turkey hunting. I think I mean I think everyone should carry a pair of binos. Doesn't matter what you're hunting. Doesn't matter if you're sitting in a tree stand. Anything. You know. Yeah, you're in a tree stand. You may not have the for the furthest visibility, mm -hmm. but you may be looking across a food plot and you see something coming out, and that's going to give you a lot more time mm -hmm. to be prepared if you can see if it's a buck or a doe or yeah. whatever's coming out. Um, you know, so, yeah, everyone, I think, should carry binoculars, so whatever oh, it man. is. Um, so, you know, for you sure. know you're hunting thick timber. Yeah, you probably don't need to invest right. quite as much. You still want some good ones that will mm -hmm. be clear, be reliable. I mean shoot you're going into some spots in idaho you know you're going to get dumped on uh at a certain oh, time man. of year mm -hmm. make sure make sure you got good enough binos that are are waterproof mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh, think about where you're going to be buy for what you're going to do and obviously like like for me i went and i invested a little bit more in my boots yep. um i bought some crispy hunters did i need those for a? Uh, well actually i ended up definitely needing those yeah. for because <laughs> snowstorm blew in but uh I mean, generally, like, you're going on a fall hunt. You don't need, like, full height no. boots like that. But I thought to myself, I'm like, here's the I can only afford one pair of boots right now. Yeah. Um, I'm going to buy a pair that, yeah, I may, they may not be as comfortable if I go on a summer hunt in Arizona. Mm -hmm. But you know what? They'll work. Yeah. I want to buy something that will work in as many situations as possible in that case. Um, yeah. You know, I was very aware of what I wanted to go do. Mm -hmm. and and bought I, for that. Yeah, I think it's it's easy to get wrapped up in the gear too, like because that's like something that you can control. And I feel like people use that. They have all the best gear, but there's things like I mean, Aaron preaches field craft all the time. Oh yeah. It's it's true. You know, it's true. Like there's people rolling out that they go out with a big lighter and that's it. And it's like, well, what if this happened? And they're like, man. I'd you know, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. It's never happened to me in the last how many every years or whatever. Yeah. But that's – and then, like, knowing how to break an animal down and knowing, knowing like, that side of it. Because, I mean, there's people that are leaving deer overnight because, I don't know, they don't know how to 
do it or they want pictures the next morning, which is true. And happens more than mm. I, I would care to admit yeah. that people do that. It yeah. But kills it's, me. I think knowing stuff like that, because it's not going to do mo you much good if you actually get an animal down. You're like, oh, my God. And then you don't know how to you know how to take it apart. You should be able to hunt as l at least as good as your gear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, and I'm probably not there yet. Like, my gear is a lot more effective than I can probably make use of. <laughs> but, uh, you know, be, o be aware of that. You know, if you don't understand the concept of how to how to look for a mm -hmm. deer that that was something like you can read all of the books all of the watch all of the videos and tutorials all the elk 101 yeah. stuff and stuff from randy on how to how to glass and it will never replace the first time you're sitting there glassing with someone and they're like okay you see that juniper over there uh the one that the one that's kind of squatty okay go you know two tree lengths over from mm -hmm. that and look next to the shiny rock and you're looking, and then you see that ear flick for the first time, and things start to click in your head. Yeah. And so it, it doesn't matter how good of a how You can have the best pair of swallows mm -hmm. in the world. And, yeah, you may get lucky, but if you don't know how to recognize and how to look for that stuff, it's not going to do you any good. The gear yeah. is useless without the field craft. Mm -hmm. No, for, yeah, exactly. And I think that's where for at least the first year or the first couple of years, like, Get a good pair of boots. Get a good backpack that's going to be able to to bear weight and and haul weight good. Um, and then don't focus so much on the gear wise. Focus on fuel cost to get you to where you need to go. Mm -hmm. Scouting. Uh, just get yourself in the field. I mean, scouting is a big thing too. Like if you draw a tag, try to go scout. I mean, like I literally picked a Colorado spot on the map this year for deer, and I made sure I went scouting. Mm -hmm. Well, scouting automatically eliminated three places because of there were some parking issues. Um, there was some just some trail like access issues, basically. But that's three days that I just spent like on a long weekend not eating into my hunt. Yeah. And so I that's that's pretty expensive, too. But yeah, or that's um, important, too. But I think. Uh, yeah, instead of focusing so much on the gear for the first couple of years, focus on getting yourself out there. Because mm -hmm. um, then I think you're not going to spend money on gear that you don't need. You're going to kind of have a better idea of yeah. what, you, what you want. Well, you know, I mean, people talk about it all the time. Like, I, I use that excuse where it's like, I don't have time or it's too expensive for me to, if I'm doing an out-of-state hunt, I, it's, it's too expensive for me to get out to uh, Idaho and scout before that. Like, mm -hmm. there's, I either have to fly and rent a car or I have to drive all the way out and pay for that gas and lodging you know whatever i'm yeah. doing you know however that happens um but the thing is like okay if if the difference is i can either go on the hunt and buy the swaros i mean just once yeah. again using optics because we're talking about it i can either i can go on the hunt and use the swaros or i can go on the hunt scout and maybe buy some vortex or some mavens like yeah. I, I was just hanging out over the maven booth checking out their stuff um yeah. and for someone just getting into it, those prices are legit. <laughs> I mean, oh man, yeah, that's actually kind of what I use because small hands and like I run the Mavens, the tents. Okay. I freaking love the those C things. The C ones, man. Three hundred. Yeah. I paid three hundred and fifty yeah. bucks for them. I love them. Mm -hmm. And then it comes to a point like when we went in July to Wyoming, kind of on the Frank and Aaron situation. I think it's Frank that just sits down and starts looking. And then Aaron, like, sits down, gets his tripod set up. Is yeah. uh, Me, I'm that. I'm Frank. I'm out looking, and I'll tell her. I think I'm it's like, the other way around, but. Yeah. Is it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I'll go scouting, like, looking instantly and just scan everything. And I'll tell her there's a group of deer under the snow line, second knob to the left. She'll sit down, and she'll look at them and tell me what they are. But I may find a few more patches of deer quicker, but she can thoroughly examine them and mm -hmm. get a more accurate evaluation of the situation than i can yeah yeah it's a i mean it's a good balance like you want to you want to once again examine the situation you know look at it you know and sometimes it is good you like make a, make a quick scan of the scan of the area go in check it out and then and then start picking apart detail after detail mm -hmm. because honestly you know what i see i see a giant buck it's good because then i can focus start focusing in around that and look for the does that are that i'm going to bust mm -hmm. and but you want to you want to be able to do both you want to have the ability to yeah. do both and glassing is not a strength i have it is yeah. a struggle for me really 
especially like down in Arizona where it's just like you literally have like 180 degrees of view in some spots mm -hmm. and you're just picking apart every single bush because you're looking for a friggin' javelina that looks like a rock. You're just yeah. looking at every yep. patch of dark rocks and you're waiting for them to move. Mm -hmm. and, and I love it. I, my, yeah, I, I enjoy my it. My buddies made, and there's something I like about it, but I just, I struggle with getting distracted and my mind wandering. And then I realize I've been glassing an area and I like, I've been looking at it, but mm -hmm. I haven't been seeing it. Seeing mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And, uh, and like my buddies, Josh Mason, they will sit, they could sit on a one small hillside for like an hour, no problem picking it apart. And mm -hmm. obviously, you know, that's, to some extent, you got to develop that patience, but sometimes, you know, you also got to realize like, okay, I'm never going to find anything, even if I try to do that, because I will yeah. not focus mm -hmm. enough. So I got to, you know, there's a lot of skills you got to develop with glassing. That's a, yeah, that's a tough one for mm -hmm. me. I need, I need action. Yeah. <laughs> I need excitement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so you've been on a couple hunts here and there. Mm -hmm. How was, uh, how was this last season? It was good. Um, I went to Colorado, had a really tough start. Um, I got really sick before the season started, so I was kind of like going on the backside of when I got really sick. And uh, so that really slowed me down in Colorado just as far as like how hard I hit it. Like it definitely made a difference. Yeah. And then I rolled into Wyoming um, on an elk hunt. I went for six days, went home for a few days, came back with three days left in the season and killed a, a herd bull on the second day. Um, got him packed out. That was the end of September, and then I drew a Arizona late season bull tag um, down in Arizona, and I nice. went down for ten days. Is that ten yeah. days? Yeah, about ten days, and I killed him on like the, the, the day before ninth. you were gonna leave. <laughs> yeah, the night. Yeah, it was it was nuts. It was crunch and, time. Uh, yeah, so I killed a big bull down there. He's like a three thirty five by six, just for a. Solid. reference i guess is super solid bull yeah for late season archery is really tough hunt i don't think i'll be going back to that area <laughs> for that but um <laughs> but yeah it was it was cool that's about it so what's um in this you know in this time you've really started getting heavier into you know, the western mm -hmm. hunting things like that um what are some of maybe the the lessons you learned or or some of the takeaways you've learned that you would you wished you had known when you when you first started getting oh, in man. and we may have covered all, some a of this already of but I, yeah i i think we have um some of the gear stuff you didn't need you know i think you like you definitely know that <laughs> packing, <laughs> packing everything in the kitchen packing sink too much yeah that's the that's nightmare. some of the stuff you know i can that stuff is dialed in to where i mean somebody could could say hey can you come film uh arizona mule deer hunt we're leaving in two days. I can be like, yeah, okay, cool. I'll just throw a bunch of stuff together because I already know like what I need. Mm -hmm. Just throw it together in my head and roll. And that's I know for a beginning a lot of that's way more planning for a lot of the beginners. So I think knowing what I don't need, I guess what's yeah. just kind of wasted weight, um, what it really really helped me starting out with. And um, I had my for my for that elk hunt. I had my pack packed. Like three weeks before the hunt, yeah, mm -hmm. I had it like planned out like a month and a half before the hunt, like yeah. fully, like I was ready to go. I had everything weighed, mm -hmm. all of that. Now I'm like, the night before, I'm like, all right, throwing some stuff together. If I'm if I'm lucky, I, I've got like two days in case I need to like <laughs> replace something or whatever. But mm -hmm. it's it is funny. Even just after a few hunts, you suddenly oh, yeah. realize what works for you. Like it doesn't take that long. I and mean, there's always learning. Yeah, and that's why I think it's really important for people to get out and hunt instead of worry so much on the gear thing, or on the gear side in just one specific hunt. Yeah, it's, gear's important, but gear's the, and, you know, obviously there's some stuff like, yeah, you know, you buy a really <laughs> shitty bow, you may not, or like, you know, you buy crappy sights for your bow. Yeah. Yeah, you may not be as dialed in as if you know you're buying uh, like a high-end spot hog or something mm -hmm. you know something like that um, and and trust me when you go that route and then you think it's okay until you get a bull in range and if you would have just bought the site that would have costed more mm -hmm. and that would have been the turning point of your hunt you're gonna freaking go buy a better site trust me oh, i've yeah. been there and uh, you know it totally forgot what i was saying i don't know it was pride. Sorry, I... Oh, no, no, no. Okay. It, I'm probably full of it anyway. Um, 
I no idea what I'm saying. I'm also, this is, We folks, are 6.30 It on is like the end of the day on day <laughs> on two. Friday. Tomorrow's going to be rough. Tomorrow's going to be a rough day. Saturday is going to be hectic. A, a lot of people, and I don't like people. <laughs> that's why hunting's so that's, wonderful. That's what you're right. It was Animals funny. don't talk back. We, uh, <laughs> we got here like 10, uh, mm -hmm. like 9.30 this morning. Yeah. We got our badge, came in, talked to a few people, and then um, we did a different podcast, and then we did a couple, we shot a couple of videos for Rockslide and talked to a few people, and I was like, I'm glazed over. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. like 12. <laughs> well, if uh, people wanted to yeah. find you, where uh, where can they follow along with the hunts, the fun? Probably uh, the Instagram, just at Jordan.Bud for me. Cool, cool. And Facebook, too, I guess. Jordan and Bud, and then on Rockslide, too. All right. Where can they find you? Uh, I'm Instagram, JordanAdams96, and then JordanAdams on Facebook as well. And then we've got Maybe. Running Water Media, the yeah. media side of the production, filming, editing, Jordan's thing. And then Running Water Hunting for the outfitting that we yeah. do. Awesome. In Nebraska. So. In Nebraska. Yeah. Yep. On Good the plug. ranch. Good plug. <laughs> <laughs> and then always can check out Rock Slide as well. Yeah. Awesome place. Yeah, it, hop on Honestly, there. yeah, to get to get feedback on stuff, you know, just ignore just ignore those three dudes that are total mm -hmm. dicks. We um, probably got rid of them by now. <laughs> <laughs> There's always that one in every crowd, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, great place to get feedback. Check that out. Um, so as we're kind of closing this mm -hmm. out, say somebody been following you online or, you know, met you at the show or just checked all this out, and, and they're like, this stuff all looks really cool, but, you know, I don't know if this is something I can do. I, you know, whether it's I don't have the background in hunting mm -hmm. or um, I – you know, I live in the city, whatever that is, if they came up to you and were like, eh, it's cool and all, but I don't mm -hmm. think this is something I could do. What encouragement or, you know, words of wisdom would you give to that person? Ooh, um, I would say go on a, I mean, go on something like a, like a turkey hunt. Mm -hmm. That's always fun. And man, if you pay for, there's places you can pay to, if you do like a private hunt, I mean, you're going to have a guide. You're going to have a nice place to stay. You're still – do something that you're probably going to see a lot of animals on, and the success rate is going to be mm -hmm. high because you're going to be able to – hopefully if the success rate is high, you're going to be able to, to shoot something. You'll have that interaction. That's going to be a big telltale sign right there, mm -hmm. if you know. And then um, just have somebody help you. Like, mm -hmm. like I said before, don't go diving into a – a crazy six mile backpack trip because <laughs> you're probably going to hate it after that. <laughs> Peel back the layers of that onion one at a time. Uh, exactly. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's, that's what it is. You'll get to the, you'll get to the middle soon enough. It doesn't take that long to, to peel them off one or two at a time. And, uh, yeah. for sure. Some fun. So yeah. any, uh, any words, other w additional words of wisdom? Just, I mean, communicate, just know your limits overall. Mm -hmm. If you've got an interest in something, pursue it. If you've got an interest in maybe trying something, talk to somebody who knows. Mm -hmm. And talk to somebody who's going to give you honest feedback. You can generally tell during the communication and the conversations, is this guy full of crap? Or yeah. is this guy, like, actually telling me stuff? Is he telling me what I want to hear? Is he telling me what I need mm -hmm. to hear? Because more or less, you're going to get 50-50. You're going to love some of it, and you're going to absolutely hate some of it. If they're trying to sell you on it, I'm not saying don't trust them, but put more thought into maybe looking into a few other resources. Mm -hmm. Use a little discernment. Multiple, yeah. yeah. Discretion. Yeah. Well, cool. All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much Absolutely. for hopping on and taking you. the time. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, thanks for getting hold of us. Fun chat. Absolutely. I'm glad, we, glad we got to do it. Definitely. Glad we got to meet everybody. Awesome. All right, y'all, that'll do it for episode 111 of Living Country in the City. Big thank you to Jordan and Jordan for taking the time out of their day to sit down with me. Make sure y'all head on over to the show notes page at livingcountryinthecity.com slash 111. Check out everything we talked about in today's episode. Additionally, head on over to sawyer.com. Check out all the amazing products Sawyer offers to keep the creepy crawlies off of you this summer. And finally, head on over to livingcountryinthecity.com. Make sure you check out the website design tab and get yourself into a brand new website or start that brand you've been thinking about. But until next time, keep it country, y'all. 
Thank y'all for listening to Living Country in the City. Get show notes and check out the blog, product reviews, events, and more at livingcountryinthecity.com.